We are here for another edition of the Law and Love podcast. That right there is Alexis Sapphire Breyer. I'm Mark Breyer, the man who is sworn to serve and obey her uh, for the rest of my life. And we're going to talk about law, love, and all kinds of cool things together. And I love this podcast because I get you in a seat with me for hours on end when we film these, and you can't go anywhere. I'm like captured. I can't go anywhere. This is my time. And I look, know. You can't even be on your phone. Not a single TikTok is viewed. It's like over there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to look at my phone, and I can't. This morning? You when, must like be so happy right now. I just want to f- do podcasts all day long. So Every that day. you can't, so that you can't grab the phone Text someone, email someone, and watch a TikTok. That's I'm probably, a busy woman. What you, can I say? <laughs> so, look, this is our like fifth podcast, yes. but it's day two. You know, to go behind the scenes a little bit, people may not realize that we have to knock out as many of these as we can because you keep me so busy and yourself so busy. So, what is your thought now? Getting into day two, like the, we know how this thing works. We now even got the really cool graphic up there to remind me it's the law and love. We got to remember. We don't have to remember now. No, I it's can It's the cheat. law and love. But we could get confused and be like, is it love and law? And did they, by mistake, keep out the life? I and I know. may still throw life in there. But law and love. But as you were heading here, were you like, this is going to be fun? Because I think like you had fun last time. We had a, we had a great time last time. We just spent a couple days at a conference and we spoke and this is a little bit different than doing the law and being at trial. You have a trial coming up. And so this is a good day. Yeah. So people, so behind the scenes, we spent the last two days at a conference. We were, there were many speakers at the conference. We were one of the speakers. I think we we were the best. (laughs) Facts. And, uh, but that we knew that going in, right? Of course. Then we had to leave the conference early after we spoke to fly in, to make it in time for the D backs game where we had people to entertain and our marketing team said to be there. True. And we Only got to, to do the t-shirt toss. Oh, we need yeah. to work on that. Well, what's this? Although I got a compliment that my throw is pretty good. What would you get to roll I was three? like, did you actually watch the TikTok there? <laughs> did, maybe you misheard. Maybe they said your husband's throw was really good. I thought your throw was really good too. Did you get it into the no, second stands or whatever? I always have wanted to get to that middle deck. And, and, you and just haven't got it there yet. I, try, I want it so bad. I just Wait, want that, that moment. What's that saying? There is no try, only do. That's a Yoda thing. There do you go. or do not, there do is no try. Do or do not, there is no try. Yoda would be very disappointed in my t-shirt toss then. Here I was feeling good about it. And now I, but next year, Sorry I'm to bring you down. Next year, I'm going to duct tape one of them because it's too light. Well, probably if you have a good enough arm. We should arm, bring in one of light. those t-shirt gun cannon? things. Cannons. Yeah, that's what it's called. T-shirt cannons. And then that's why they get it so far. And that way we can sneak it in and have our own husband and wife law team t-shirt cannon. But that's obviously cheating. I want to cheat where you can't tell. So, cause no one's going to know why it's wrapped up or not wrapped up in duct tape, but it'll fly. I can get it there like that. Yeah. I can get it there. I think you could. So our first guest, our yes. guest on this episode of the law and love. I and love life that we have to still podcast. look at it. It's only two words and we can't remember law and love. This is, so I'm actually Shouldn't very excited. Shouldn't it be love and law? Well, I mean, what comes first, law or love? I thought life came life before Life comes that. first. <laughs> so- Derek Moore is going to be here, and we're going to get a chance to talk about someone who brought enthusiasm and passion in a way that it is it is affected. So everyone who's a Diamondbacks fan knows this knows this man all because not because of what he does, but because of how he does it. Yeah. So I'm I'm excited to jump into. Do, do you know what your first question is going to be? Or are you going to let me take the lead? I'm going to let you take the lead. It's an on excellent that. choice. I don't know. Maybe. When he comes on, I'll have a good first question. But it is interesting because oftentimes the behind the scenes people are just as important, if not more important than the people who are actually, you know, on the field and everyone who people are seeing. So we're going to get to see. In everything in life. Just in everything in life. Yeah. Everything in law and love. Who's doing life? All right. You ready? (laughs) Yes. All right. Let's get our first. Let's get our guest on for the day. Derek. Before I even say hello or anything else, I have a, a question that it's like, ever since I found out we were going to get you here, it's been like, I got to ask this first. Bigger moment. <laughs> Husband and wife law team podcast, meeting Taylor Swift. That's got to be meeting Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> 
That was the litmus test to find out if you were going to be honest and reveal who you really were today. That's very, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But for those that don't know, instead of me telling it, when you're somewhere, let's say you're somewhere and you're not in the state of Arizona or you're somewhere and someone goes, what do you do? Right? Because a lot of people know, how do you answer that question? I work at sporting events, concerts, and events, and I sell lemonade. And I sell it in my own unique way with all the enthusiasm that I can and just, you know, I was, I believe that I was custom built for this job <laughs> because I get to do everything that I wasn't allowed to do as a kid. All well, right. That enthusiasm, is that just something that you were born with or did you I have to work so. at that? I think so. I but, think I was born with it. But now you just open the door to write I, some, so let, let's, so let me ask my favorite question. Someone asked me this, and I, I'm going to ask you, before, before this, before everyone knew you, before you had something that defined visits to events here, what's your story? Well, I, I grew up uh, primarily raised by a single mom. My dad, he was in the military, and I, I got to see him on vacations and, you know, but primarily by my, my mom and my grandmother. And I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. And, and my, my grandmother, uh, she was the first person that I really knew owned a business. She had a daycare. She kept and watched kids for people. And I, I think we were really close. And was that, where was that? In South Phoenix. Okay. Oh, so you're born and raised Arizona. Born and raised you in beat Arizona. everybody here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so tell us how you got into the whole lemonade stand thing and tell us more about that. Cause a lot well, of. Well, you just skipped three steps. You're already at the lemonade stand. We haven't even found out what he couldn't do as a kid. There's so. I you just feel like there's so want, much Derek. about the lemonade thing, and I just want to know and tell everyone so fast. Well, I, I actually, I, I'm i going to go a little back. I'm going to yes. start a little back. Okay. I got a job working at the Coliseum where the Phoenix Suns used to play, and I was a porter, which is basically someone who cleans up and stocks the stands and, you know, checks on the stands and makes sure they, they have what they need. And uh, December 31st of 1984, the Fiesta Bowl parade was there. And the company, the only way the company could make money is if they put all their employees out there to sell something. Soda. And, you know, that's, that's how I ended up first getting into vending. And I actually hated it because I didn't make much money that day. But I, one of the managers talked me into doing uh, vending for spring training. And I didn't want to do it, but I, told, I made a deal with them. I worked four hours on the clock, and then I would go out and sell. And that day changed my life. So do you remember it? I mean, you don't have to say the whole name. Do you remember the name of that manager? I, yes, I do. He's now an executive with uh, Delaware North Corporation. He is, he's all over the world. So and, what did they tell you you had to do? Like, did they give you any training or just say like, here's the thing it, and go out? Exactly. That's what they did. They and what did you sell that day? That day I sold uh, soda. Not beer. Not alcohol. beer. I wasn't old enough to sell beer. <laughs> How old were you at this time? I was 18. Okay. Yeah. So it's interesting that you thought you were going to be a porter that day. Go sell this, right? The yeah. easy thing to do at that point is, and this is true for a lot of people, right? We have a bad experience. I'm done. Right. Would you have ever done it again if that manager didn't talk you into it? No. But I, I thank him so much. And I can say his name, right? Yeah, yeah. Jim I love Hauser. I, I, what's his name again? I, Jim Hauser. Jim Hauser. Because 
It's the impact people can make. Now, I'm curious, and you may not know it, or I don't know what he said to you, but did he, even though you didn't have a good day, did he see something in you that day, or the company just needed it? He, he saw something in me. He, has, he said I had an enthusiastic personality. And well, he wasn't wrong. You just weren't getting the sales. He, yeah. So you made a comment earlier about how it allows you to do some things you couldn't do when you were a kid. Where, where is that coming from? Well, the biggest thing is my stepmom, my dad's wife, um, she would always tell me that kids are supposed to be seen and not heard. So I basically around her, I couldn't talk. So, and, and you know, but I say God gave me a job where I can talk all of all the much I want to, you yeah. know, as much as I want to. And, uh, you know, my dad kind of frowned at me dancing in public, but I can do that too. Right. And so now there is a journey because it, now it's spring of 85. You head out there, you start selling. Now, do you remember what you sold in the spring training of 85? I sold sodas. And was it like all different types of sodas or did they it just was, give you it like... Was, it was like a, probably... Uh, Pepsi and Sprite. I think they should have given you ice cream. Up. Right. <laughs> I've sold along the way. I've sold like ice cream easier. also. I've sold ice cream along the way also. So at what point that spring were you like, I found it. I found something that was it at, at that spring that you were like that spring. I got to do it a few more times mm -hmm. and I fell in love with that job. And you made more than you were making as a porter. So did you did they do it by commission back then? Or did yeah. you you still got yeah, was, yeah. Got it. I mean, there's got you're a salesperson, they got to incentivize salespeople. All those people yeah. could walk up and down and never sell a thing. Yeah. The, and did they give you a certain section? Or could no, you go you just go, wherever? You could, go, you could go all over. Now you go from a vendor. Is that the right word? Um, yeah, vendor. A vendor, right? So you go from a vendor at spring training, right? Now there's a journey that takes you from that to one of the best known vendors anywhere in the country, right? Yeah. What is that journey like? Well, the journey is you you uh, you find other venues and other other companies, and you go work for them, and you keep going, did you know around different venues? Is it? Is it fun or because it, it's a lot of walking? It's it's a lot of carrying it heavy stuff. It is fun. It is a blast. But you got to be built for this. Now, what do you mean by that? Like physically able to handle it or uh, mentally? Phys physically, mentally, all of it. You got to you got to have uh, the stamina to do it. When you go to an event and you see vendors, are you like watching them and being like? She sucks. You know, like what 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 is it like when you're watching other people <laughs> I, I, do what you do? I've said that, but I've also I've also met people that have been in the business longer than me and they are awesome. I, I've I've seen some pretty good people and I, I give them respect. I feel like when you're at a sporting event, you can tell which of those vendors wanna be there and yeah. which are like, get me out of here. Right. They need that manager to talk to them and be like, hey, yeah. if you're going to be here, like, be here. Like, right. Make the best of it. Yeah. Have you ever had to do that? Do you ever get asked to go work with some young vendor because they need to? Yes, I have. I, and I, I, I've recruited vendors. And, and, and uh, some of them have turned out to be pretty good. And what do you, what about? Like, if you think about when you've said you need to come do this, what about your interaction with someone made you go, come, come and do what I right. do, this will work for you? Right. Just, I, um, I just see how they interact with people and how, you know, uh, just a lot of it is, you know, uh, we have handheld computers now to ring up the sales, but... Before it was all in the head, and as I was, how are your math skills? Right. You know. Sometimes they have to get that charge card from the middle of the aisle all the way down. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it used to be cash. It used, it used to be cash. I know. And you you pass the cash down, and you hope no one takes it, 
and then the food comes back or whatever you got, and then you got to wait for the change to come back. Exactly. That so the, it's much faster now, right? Uh, yeah. But two important things that you've said so far for anyone who's watching or listening is number one, don't give up. Like you had your whole life would have been totally different if you didn't say, you know, I'm still going to try this. Obviously the manager was an important part also, but I think oftentimes people do just give up. They yes, try something they one or two times and then they just want to run away from it. Right. And I think that's an important lesson that you bring up that your whole life can be changed based on just listening to someone, mm -hmm. trying, and, and vice versa. You can change somebody's life yeah. by, I mean, you're out there um, looking for people potentially or just seeing who they are. And you have the opportunity too, to, as do others, to really change someone's life, which is yes. amazing. Yes. I'm not going to lie to you. Thinking about what you do makes me want to do it for a day. I was going to say, Mark's <laughs> going to want to try. It, you would be good at it, too. I don't know if I could do the lemonade, It'd though, because it's so heavy. only have one sale, though, because he'd talk to the same person the entire time. He'd, like, know their whole life story and and be like... Maybe I wouldn't be good at it. No, <laughs> we got, should try I this. I got a cotton candy pole waiting for you. Can That's we try I'm... this? Can we, can we be See, a now, vendor? Because cotton candy... Oh, I, cotton I can, candy. It's still, like, the heavy thing, but wait, it's... See, I feel like I can handle that. Mark I could be once wanted, I think you can. He wanted to... Um, can you get me in? I can. Oh, there I, you go. I got a shirt for you. And I could sell for charity, and that's cheating, but I get any wages I get, whatever I earn, go to a charity, yes. which could help sell more cotton candy. I we, could do this for a day. We once had... Um, he wanted to be a cashier. He said he could be the cashier and do it fast, bring it, and he did, and he was great. So... I was part of a Kiwanis club or something, and they had this thing where we, on July 4th, at a ballpark, you know how sometimes when you go to different ballparks, yeah. like a charity will have, or mm -hmm. whatever, will have a stand. Mm -hmm. So I sold hot dogs and beer from behind a counter, and I came to her, I was like, that's my calling. That's my calling. It, it, it was so much fun because in so many jobs, or at least I'll speak for myself, in my job, and I love my job, but I'm helping people through a very difficult time in a very stressful situation. And, it, and, uh, and I love what I get to do. But when you're selling hot dogs and beer at a family-friendly event, people aren't approaching you with something heavy. They're approaching you generally happy, and you can make them happier. Now, I can't yeah. do it. Uh, by the way, just to be clear. I am not comparing you. my <laughs> one day behind a counter at a Kiwanis 25 years ago to to someone who's legendary in this world. I'm not, I'm just saying I have a glimpse into how awesome what you do might be. And I, and I have a story for you. Um, one year at spring training, there was a family and daughters and the mom and, you know, I was out there doing what I do and the mom was so entertained and so happy. And a few weeks after that, the daughter, they, the mom got diagnosed with cancer and passed away. The next time I saw the daughter, she said, the best, the memories I have of that day when that's how I see my mom. Aww. And you never know what somebody is going through. Yeah. We think they're there to have fun and they are but you don't know what's going on yeah. in the background. So you're such an integral part, you know. I'm sure you're seeing people a lot over and over again it, too, which yeah. is so cool. It's misleading in this way, that story. That's the person who told you the story. Yeah. yeah. How many people have you impacted at a critical moment in a critical way that talk about you that you, so when I say misleading, I'm just talking about in scope. For you to hear that story probably represents hundreds or thousands of similar. Because generally, when with a person, that's amazing. That is amazing. That is Very amazing. cool. And you were Thank just you doing your thing, which you do all the time. Yeah. The um, So I have to ask about this. Well, I have one question first. I'm about to get to how we went from being great at what you did to now owning a lemonade stand at Chase Field, owning a small business like your grandmother. But let me put that to the side. 
for all of us who go to events, concerts, sports, whatever, what is the thing that's the hardest part of what you do that we don't know? Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's, 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 this is a good and a bad thing. It's sometimes uh, working with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's, it's, sometimes we have a difference of opinion, but it all gets worked out. Because your daughter's here in the room right now. Yeah, She's not she on is. camera and she just tried to throw something at you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. I mean, if you think it's hard working with your kids, try working with your spouse. <laughs> Oh, that, that's yeah. impossible, you right? You just open up a whole new thing. Well, it's easy for me to work with my spouse, but she's got to work with me. But so I think it's, it's amazing. I mean, everything has its gives and takes, right? Especially when you're working with family. Yeah. Um, but I always tell Mark, like, you know, for our kids, you know, we have four boys, four girls. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I would love to work with them. And he's like, never, never. Um, but we, I mean... I think if you met our not, kids, you'd understand my no. No, they're all they're all great kids. But I do think working with family, there is a just an element of living the profession and what you do that you can't get to this. You know, it's just different, right? Working right. with your kids as I mean, obviously, we have great team members and they care in a lot of ways just as much as we do. Right. Um, but I think you know, family members, it's just a different dynamic. Right. Um, they've watched it their whole life, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think that they, you know, it's like in their soul and in a different way, I'm sure watching you and, yeah. um, but so tell us about your, your kids and, oh. um, and, the, and, the, and work it. Well, you got to tell us how them. you got there first. Before you tell us what it's like now, having a stand that anyone can go to at Chase Field when they go to the park, how, how did that happen? Like, to me, that's not a normal path. <laughs> well, like I said, it's been my desire and it's been my dream since about 2010, 2011. Um, but let's see, in 2019, a person who worked for the Phoenix Suns came by my stand and uh, he was like, you should get out there and do your have your own at, and so he had been also doing things on the side with uh he has a a juice company and he's been doing that far, farmers markets so he 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 talked me into doing farmers markets and phoenix first fridays and that worked out for a couple of months and you know but I was still, I was still vending on the side right. too. But you know, and then the pandemic happened, and which was inconvenient. Which is inconvenient, <laughs> you know. But you know, and fast forward, uh, my son, he's like, we need to get back out there, and you know, you know, I got sick and everything, and how the the community helped us. That's amazing. When you talk about if if you did not know your impact before, maybe you should share that story because yeah. I know it. But you got sick. I got sick with a tumor in my stomach, and, and the the doctors didn't know what it was. My wife, Renita, she's a three time brain tumor survivor. Wow. Um, she told them it was a tumor. She argued with twenty doctors, got on the table, and told them it's a tumor. Find it. They said, we don't have that equipment here. She said, go to a particular hospital. They have that equipment and find the tumor. And they did. That's remarkable. Yes. So if she doesn't speak up and if they don't listen, although it took her standing on the table for them yes. to listen, but nonetheless, her intuition yes. and her, I don't know what the word is, Passion, stubbornness, insist, yeah. yeah, whatever it took to help her husband, and otherwise they don't find it. Right. Which is a good lesson for everyone. I always tell people, like, you have to advocate for yourself, um, especially with healthcare, I feel like, because they don't really know what you're feeling, and there's so many different things that it could be. So having somebody there who's like, 
back to the doctor, tell them it's this, or no, we're going that next step. I feel like so often people aren't advocates for themselves like right. that. Derek, when she was doing that, when she was fighting for you, were you like, let's just get out of here, they know better? Or no, you- actually, I was uh, unconscious. Wow. I, I only know this after the fact, because I was in a coma for two and a half months. Wow. Of the four months I was in the hospital. So you were having some symptoms? Yeah. And then you went yeah. to the hospital. And then just, did they put you in the coma or did they, what happened? Uh, that, I'm really not sure if they put me in the coma or I just went in the coma. But you got to get your But when you come out us. of the coma, yeah. when you come out of the coma, you yeah. have six figures of medical bills and, and then a community. Like, yeah. how did that even come to be that this entire state rallied behind getting you I, back on your I, financial feet. Well, one, my godson, TJ Prayer, who's a coach at a uh, Betty Fairfax football team, he, he uh, decided to do a GoFundMe for me. And he went to the D-backs and had, he announced it. And also uh, my wife called one of the uh, TV stations and talked to one of the the reporter. I believe it was Cameron Cox. And uh, it just, after that, money came in. Just so amazing. I mean, to pay for hundreds of thousands of dollars of medical bills and the community to support you. That must be just such an awesome feeling knowing that all those people were there for you. And that's yeah, so how cool. did that feel when that started happening? Right. Were, were you awake at that point? Yeah. So you were aware of it. Yeah. How, how did it feel on, on you side, your side, your family side as that's happening? I felt, I felt loved. I felt loved. So when I asked you before the hardest part, I was a little surprised by your answer. So I'm, I figure most people are unwilling to stand out. They're afraid to stand out. They may want to. Oh, yeah. Oh, but yeah. but so to do what you do and the way you do it, um, you have to stand out. And I thought, even though that'll get you all that love, I thought you were going to say you get hate too. Like, you know, oh, sit down. I don't need to hear this right now, you know, because people don't like to see other people with the courage to be themselves. Is that not, do you face that? I, sometimes I do. There, there are people who, there are some people who don't like it, but the the other people outweigh those people. Oh, it's not close. I think Does you're it, just like too happy for them. Yeah. They're like, what? No. Yeah, but you and you have to because of you're you're a performer, in my opinion, right? Every yeah. day it's sales, it's performance. If you have a tough day, right? Let's say your daughter does something that drives you nuts. I'm not saying that would ever happen, right. but since she's here, let's pick on her. Now you got to go to the game, right? Now you got to go to the game, and she just said something that makes you go, what is wrong with this girl? I'm, I'm sure it never happens to you. It doesn't happen to us either. We have four daughters, and they're perfect. Oh, my. Absolutely I don't perfect. even know where to start. But, and, but you still got to do your thing. Once I'm out there, the light turns on, and the smile comes on. And I'm able. So now you are a full-fledged entrepreneur, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Um, you, you're in effect. You know, you're you're taking it on. Is it what you expected? Harder, different? It's it's everything I expected. But I mean, some I've learned some lessons from last year. That's good. I've learned when, some lessons. When like, we had our office, it was nothing that we expected at first. <laughs> we were like, I wish somebody would have told us all of these things. Well, and, so, and, and, you know, you, I'm a vendor, but I have to make managerial decisions. Yes. Yeah. You are yeah, full-fledged entrepreneur now. Yes. You know, you're, you're not half, you're not, you didn't dip your toe in. You yeah. are running a business. Right. And- and that means you got to make calls that you don't want to make because it's right for the business. And, and, and yeah, and you, you sometimes you finding the right suppliers, you know, and with one of the, one of our items we went through 
three different suppliers already. Actually, four. And I had one one of our suppliers just, uh, she was supposed to give a 30-day notice. She just quit that day. Wait, what? And, yeah. <laughs> and, we act, and we actually had to find. My daughter found another supplier quickly. With that? Yeah, she found my daughter. My daughter, she's good at that. I don't like using the word emergency or urgent too much, but if your supplier quits that day, yeah, that's about as urgent. You can't sell you what can. you don't have, right? But like, she was she she quit that day, but she gave us a recommendation for someone else. My daughter contacted her. My son went to see her, and we're rolling again. Whoa. I, I mean, I'm just... All right, so if I don't ask you these questions, even though you've probably told this story 50 times and I find your passion and the way you approach what you do far more interesting because I'm not a Swifty. I got nothing against Taylor Swift. I think she's unbelievably talented. I truly believe that. I don't know anything about music, but the way she writes songs and what she says to me. However, not many people have had the experience you had. So even though you told, you've told the story probably many times, can you tell us the day it started and how that all came to be? <laughs> wow. Well, it, it, the crazy thing is two years prior to us meeting, she had a concert at a venue, and I didn't like the particular product I'm not going to say the name. I'm not going to give them. Right. But Don't was, worry. We'll defend you in the lawsuit. Yeah, right, right, I'll probably not, right. better, better not say it. <laughs> I'm, I was selling a particular product, and I thought I wasn't going to do well on it, so I was just screaming that product out. And, um, yeah, they visited, the fans videotaped me, sent the video of that to her. And she said, the next time I'm in in the city, I'm going, I want to meet him. And, you know, that happened that during the intermission, you know, they one of the managers came and got me and took me back to her, her dressing room. Were you That's ready so cool. for that? I didn't know what was going on. And they didn't tell me ahead of time. So you showed up for just a, another concert. You've done many of them. You've, yeah. seen, you've seen probably ama or been a yeah, part of amazing. Yeah, you must have seen a lot of different. Yeah. Do you get to actually watch or are you too busy? I'm busy. Yeah. But I'll, I'll sneak a peek here right, and right. there. But you can hear at least for With music. Concert. Yeah. But in the World Series when the, when the place is packed, are you able to at all keep an eye on the game? Oh, yeah. You can. Okay. Yeah. And um, so you, someone comes up to you like, we need, we need you backstage? Yeah. So now are you nervous? I'm like, come on. I was like, this like, is, I gotta this sell is my this, sales. Right. I got to sell but, this product I don't right, like. But, <laughs> no, it's you a know, new product this time. Oh, but it's a new that's product. That's okay. True. She compensated me. Oh, she. I hear she does amazing she, things for her She team. compensated me. So was it before she went on or in the middle of her show that you went No, it was there? before she went on. And you go back there. Yeah. And what does she say? Uh, She's... She took a picture with me, which you've all seen. Right. And she says, I said, I, I was telling her how much I like what she does. And she's like, no, I like what you do. And, you know. I changed my mind. That's so cool. <laughs> now I'm a Swifty. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. We we went to a Taylor Swift concert. Oh, this is. And it's a. It's Taylor Swift is arguably one of my worst moments as a father. Very. A let me, we did let a me bad tell you decision. what I did. So. My daughter calls me up. She's like 13 years old. She's like, Dad, Dad, I won, I won a, a radio contest. I was like, okay. She's like, they need your social security number and da, da, da. I was like, it's a scam. She said, no, Dad, it's not a scam. I called this big station, da, 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 and I won. I won. I get to go backstage and meet Taylor Swift, meet and greet. They'll fly me to the show. I'm like, no one's asking for my social security. It's a scam. Right. So anyway, I, the, the short story of my horrible parenting is I made her say no. I found out later she had one. She would have had a meet and greet 
on the last show on Halloween night of a Taylor Swift tour. And I, she would, and then, so then after that, I was cheering for Taylor Swift to fail for the rest of her career because <laughs> if she was like a one album huge hit, but then dropped off, then my failure was less. Yeah. Now she is literally the Michael Jackson of this generation, like the defining icon and and I deprived my daughter. We deprived yeah. her. So that's yeah. probably worse than anything you ever did to your daughter. Okay. <laughs> but it, it was Halloween. Also, I, I think we also, we definitely thought it was a scam. Because right. we were like, you know, she was what? Middle school or elementary right. school. And we were like, this can't be. Well, and then we like, were also like, it's Halloween night. And when you have little kids, Halloween night is like, how do you have a concert on Halloween night? You know, we were like we have to take the kids trick or treating, but it turned out to be real. And it was, it is one of the things that we say was one of our big parental fails, which I guess isn't so bad for I have raising many. eight kids. We don't have enough yeah. time to go through all my no, failures. That's why I said we, although yeah, that was your they're decision. They're mostly mine. Yeah. They're mostly yours. So if you hadn't ended up doing this, right? Yeah. Do you think you would have found something that you could have brought the same passion to? Or do you look back and go, if it wasn't for that moment, I don't find anything where I can live my full self? I wouldn't have found anything. This is, this is what I was meant to do. If you had the choice, okay? And you may not be, if you can't answer this, Derek, you can just tell me you can answer it. But if you had the choice and you could sell anything, would it be beer or lemonade? Oh, definitely lemonade. Cause the the thing is, I used to sell beer, and literally at December fifth, two thousand and two, I'm selling beer at a Suns game, and I heard the audible voice of God say, "Not one more beer." I know, yeah, and I was like, I looked down. I was nearing the end of my case. There was two beers left in that case. I turned, I checked out. And the next day there was a hockey game and I called off sick. But because you were beer vending, that's it. Yeah. And then I would yeah, I sold lemonade partially be between there too, but primarily I was a beer vendor at that point. And then that was on a Friday. Saturday, there was a hockey game, and I called off sick. Monday, I went in and told them I can't sell any beer anymore. And what did they give, what did they give you? Do you remember? But I, it wasn't beer. They listened. Yeah, I, I, I just wasn't vending at that time, but I, I had stopped vending completely. But that, that was in December. But in January... I went and worked uh, the monster trucks and the Supercross, selling lemonade for the one of uh, the guys who did the original guy that had the lemonade cotton candy contract in uh, Chase Field. So, your signature call, yeah, was that something? Did you go in going? Because I've wondered this because you know a lot of people like announcers, people performers, they end up with something that's super memorable. Did you plan it? You know, I in my li I used to have a Toyota Tercel, my little red car, and I mm -hmm. I would be driving down the street, and sometimes I would be thinking about slogans to say, and I was like, lemonade, 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 like Grandma made, uh -huh. and it stuck. <laughs> and how soon did you know you had found it? Uh, pretty much right away. Soon, yeah. And like, I mean, when I sold beer, it was ice cold brew. You know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and that stuff matters. Oh yeah, oh yeah. People like the slogans. Yeah. And do they? Do you think, on average, um, and again, maybe this is something that, like, because of whatever, you can't answer. But at this point, you know, and for like the last number of years. What percentage of the people buying are buying because they want a lemonade? And what percentage now are buying because they want to get a lemonade from you? Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because like you, you can't hit every section in a stadium in no. one game, right? No. 
But you had people going, I was waiting, I was hoping you would come. Right. And if you come, they're they're getting it. Oh yeah. So how many times do you have to refill in a game? A lot. Well, if the, it depends on this the size of the crowd. Of course. But yeah, there's you know, when when the crowd is packed, when the stadium's packed, you, you might refill maybe 10, 12 times. So haters gotta hate, right? Haters gotta hate. There got to be other vendors, not, not not the good ones, not the ones, I mean, not most people, but there have to be people who don't want to give credit where it's due. Yeah. And you ever get any snarky, like... Uh, and I'm not really snarky, but other vendors will tell me, I won't sell lemonade because of you. I got to <laughs> sell something else. Which makes sense, right? Right. Because now you're, yeah. you know... It, that makes some sense. And but you don't only sell lemonade because if you're at other events, yeah, they may not have lemonade. Well, I you know, our our products, lemonade, cookies, rice krispies, cotton candy, water. That all sounds so good right now. Yeah, but heavy. I mean, yeah. the rice krispie treats I could carry, but lemonade and water, I mean, that's a how much do one of those things weigh? Oh man. Uh, about 50 pounds or so yeah up and down those up steep and down steps the stairs, yeah and you don't are you given a or let's not use you as an example but i'm curious because there may be other people like man i think i'd be good at that and i think i'd enjoy it is the typical vendor going here are your sections or everyone's on their own go do your thing Every everyone's on on their own do you think you could if you move tomorrow you move to chicago could you pick it could you do this anywhere I could not do lemonade anywhere, but I, I, you know, and since I'm no longer doing beer. Right, right. <laughs> right. You, your options are now limited. Limited, yeah. <laughs> that, so last major set of questions. When you, in what you do, generally there's not recognition. You get paid and people appreciate you. There's that. But you were that major league baseball vendor of the year. 2015. I mean, that's crazy. And how that all came about is I got to give credit to the announcers at the D-backs. They decided to put that uh, the whole thing to the, together. It was their idea. How did you find out they were doing that? I didn't until, <laughs> until it came. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. So... Now, I so I would have normally said, you know, would you suggest this for other people? What do you think of it? But I happened to find out before we went on together that you got your daughter into the business too. So you must think this is a good opportunity for the right person. And not only my daughter, two of my sons, and uh, actually occasionally I can get my daughter to sell cotton candy. <laughs> <laughs> occasionally. And she's actually good. Do you guys have, oh, like, family competitions? Uh, no, no, no. Because no. it's well, not a fair fight, right? No, no. <laughs> well, you, there was a competition with my godson. He's he's pretty decent, too. But but he's he, not you. Yeah, he's, no. <laughs> but You got to teach them he, your dancing skills and <laughs> all that stuff. But he, he, I can't get him to vend anymore. He's, you know, he's a, a, a school teacher and a coach and. He's got he's got four kids and he's a little busy. Yeah, he's a little he's busy. He's a little busy. Yeah. But well, I love that you took the time. Thank you for allowing us to have a, a local legend. You know, where this is going out beyond just the state of Arizona, but to be able to not just meet you, hear your story, it's just such an example of if you bring passion to anything, whatever it is, it's better. It can't always be like like you said, you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but you were, you were built for this, right? You have a yeah. skill set for it. But it doesn't matter how good you are at it if you don't bring the passion you bring. Right. You know, so thank you so much for coming yeah. on. Yes, I thank you. It. I, I want to, yeah, we have a Instagram. Yes. And it's grandma's made underscore lemonade. Now, who can get it? Uh, if you're on Instagram, you can get, you can get it. Do you guys ship it? Uh, we, we will be coming out with shirts pretty soon. We're working on shirts and 
And do you show up at local events outside of the ballparks? I I have. You have. As a matter of fact, last December I did a uh, charity event for uh, a, a school out in Gilbert. They they're gonna do it again this year, and it's uh, they have a Alex Lemonade Stand, which is an event for cancer. And uh, yeah, so I'll be doing it again on December nineteenth for that that uh, school. Wow, what a great cool. what a great event and a great thing for you to do. And don't drop don't drop the possibility of me grabbing some of that cotton candy and trying to sell some for you. I actually I I think of a I thought of a charity for you to give the money to, if do, you do. Yeah, you all right. What charity? Uh, a, a local women's shelter. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I mean, I get and and it's your stand I'm selling for, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you can get me in. I, yeah, you think definitely. I you think I could pass security clearance? Oh uh, yeah, well I think we could do that. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. I would love to do that. And and if I if I am so weak that I quit after four innings, <laughs> I get, I'll have to. You got to go I, seven. I got to the pride. Got to go seven. <laughs> you got to go seven, and and that way you know. I I'm think, serious about I this. Think, I think you know, announce it that you. Uh, I figure out what the the women's shelter. This season's almost done. Between this season and next season, we got to find it out. I think it would be a lot of fun. I would love to be able to help out your what you're doing as it is. It'd be great to help out a, an awesome local charity. And and I may not be that good at it, but I think I might have some fun. We'll see. Yeah. I'll at least learn to appreciate what you and all the vendors do everywhere and the hard work you guys put in. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you.